Welcome to Mika Model College Online Tutorial. We hope at the end of this lesson, you will have acquired the expected learning outcome. Sit down and listen attentively as we introduce our subject teacher. Hello students, I am Michael Pozove Obansa, your account teacher. Today we are going to be discussing a very important topic in accounting titled Subsidiary Books and Source of Documents. Subsidiary Books and Source of Documents. While we are discussing uh, the uh, bookkeeping, we'll talk about bookkeeping is an aspect that takes care of what record as far as accounting is concerned. But here, this record, what, where do they come from? That is what we want to see this in this uh, class. Now, source of documents, all entry must be supported by a documentary evidence. Take note of that. There should, no, there should be no any entry, as far as accounting is concerned, that will not be supported by documentary evidence. It should be supported by one. Therefore, the source of documents provide detailed information for preparation of the book. It is from the source of documents that the books will be prepared from. The documents are invoice. This source of documents, invoice, we have the debit notes, we have the credit notes, we have the statement of account, invoice, debit notes, credit notes, statement of account. Now, let's take a look at them one after the other. An invoice. An invoice, I believe, my dear students, that you are familiar with this, that it is a statement that shows the description of goods, description of goods, its quantity, its price, discount, if any, that is if the company or the organization that you are buying from is giving discount, and the terms of payment are sent by the supplier. Therefore, I define invoice as a statement that shows the description of goods, its quantity, its price, discount, if any, and the terms of payment are sent by the supplier. This is a typical example or specimen of an invoice. Like we have it in the definition you can see on the screen that we have the description of the items that are bought. Description of item. Your item name, you can see it down there. Then you have the quantity that is unit cost per one. The quantity different from what? The unit cost, that is the price and the amount and at the uh, end of the whole thing, the total that of goods that is being uh, purchased. Everything should be summarized in an invoice. Let's see another source of document which is the debit note. This is a document sent by the seller to the buyer to correct an undercharge. Take note of this. Correction of what? An undercharge or when goods are not charged on the invoice, the debit note is used to do that. If an invoice is sent and good, the goods, a good is missing inside the invoice, it is not recorded in the invoice, you can make use of the debit note to correct. The buyer can also use this document to claim an overcharge. If there is an overcharge, maybe an item that you are supposed to that is supposed to be sold to you maybe at the rate of 40,000 Naira was uh, being given to you at the rate of uh, let's say 80,000 Naira. This can be, uh, the debit note can be used, can be sent by the, the seller, uh, the buyer rather, to the seller to make this correction. Now, the debit note is sent to a customer to increase their indebtedness. Take note of this. The debit note is sent to a customer to increase the level of debt that they are holding. That is to say, what the amount of debt, the total amount, the total value of debt that you are holding, the debit note will be used to increase this indebtedness. Now, this is the specimen of um, a debit note. You have it also similar to that of an invoice, but in this, this you have description and the final value, and don't forget there is always a provision for signature, that is the signature of the company and the signature of the person that 
is by from the company. Let's see another source of documents, which is credit notes. Credit notes. This is a document sent by the seller. This time around is by the seller to the customers for reduction in the amount owed by him. I repeat again. This is a document sent by the seller to the customer for reduction in the amount owned by him. Take for example, when a customer buy something from its supplier, an amount is owned, an amount is owned by the customer to the supplier. This credit note is sent to reduce that amount if there is need. This arises because some goods are damaged. These are the needs, these are the reasons that cause for what? Reduction in the amount owned by what? A customer. One, goods may be damaged or not supplied as ordered. As ordered. You can order for maybe uh, 20 cartons of a particular product. Let's say Indomie, you are ordering for 20 cartons. Then at the end of the day, you are supplied just 15 cartons. You will not, the company will not make it mandatory for you that you must pay for the 20 carton. You will be paying, you may have paid for the 20 carton before now, but uh, what was supplied to you was 15 carton. We will use the credit note to reduce your money from uh, the payment of 20,000 down to the payment of 15,000. This can also arise in a situation whereby goods are damaged. Maybe you uh, uh, ordered for a particular goods and when it is given to you, it is not in good condition. Some are damaged. You will not pay, the company will not make it mandatory for you to pay that exact amount because some are already damaged. You will be paying for the one that are useful to you. Now, to avoid confusion, my dear student, take note of this. If there has been an overcharge, on some goods return, it must be printed in red. If there has been, if it is an overcharge, it should be printed in a red letter. This can be viewed from two perspectives. That is the credit note now. We can see it from two perspectives. Now, the first one is credit note received from supplier. Credit notes can be received from supplier. If the credit note relates to goods return, to the supplier, it will be entered in the return outward books. If it relates to goods returned by the supplier, it will be entered in the return outward book, and thereafter it is debited to the supplier's account. The next perspective that we can see credit notes is credit notes being issued. The first one, don't forget, it was received. The second one is that it's is issued to customer. This will be posted to returns inward book. The other one return outward, but this one returns inward book and then credited to the customer's account. Now, the last uh, source of documents that we are going to discuss in this lesson is the statement of account. This is a document sent by the seller to the buyer at a regular interval. You can be doing it maybe on a monthly basis or on yearly basis or on quarterly basis, as the case may be. It's, this one is determined by the accounting period set by the organization. Usually, it shows the debits and the credits to the customers and the balance due. Let me repeat it again. A statement of account is a document sent by the seller to the buyer at a regular interval usually showing debits and credits to the accounts and the balance due. Now, let us see the tabular representation of original books and their source of documents. Don't forget, the topic we are still discussing is what? Subsidiary book and source of documents. We want to see the original books now, that is the subsidiary books, and the various source of documents. The first one is the purchases day book. Don't forget, this purchase day book can also be called purchases journal. By the time we start discussing them one after the other, you will understand better. I 
I said under the subsidiary book, you can see we have the purchase day book or purchase journal. What is the source of documents to purchase day book or purchase journal? It is income, incoming invoice, incoming invoices and debit notes that has been received. Then we have the second one which is sales day book or journal. Sales day book or sales journal. Source of documents to sales day book or sales journal is outgoing invoices. That is invoices that are being sent out of the organization. Then debit notes issued. All these two can serve as what? The source of uh, documents to sales day book or sales journal. Then we have the third one which is return outwards book. Returns outwards book. What is the source of documents to return outward book? Is incoming credit notes. Incoming credit notes. This one is just one. Incoming credit notes and no any other source of documents. We have another one, the sales returns book. The sales return book. The source of documents to sales return book is credit notes sent out. The credit notes sent out of the organization will be the source of documents to what? Sales return book. Cash book as a subsidiary book. What are the source of documents to cash book? We have cash itself. We have the incoming checks. We have incoming receipts. We have checks and counterfoils. Then we have the final one, which is the petty cash book. Petty cash book is another source of document. And the only source of, um, is another subsidiary book rather. Petit cash book is a subsidiary book and the only source of documents to it is the petit cash voucher. The petit cash voucher. We have seen today the tabular representation of all the subsidiary books and the source of documents. We have seen the various source of documents that we have. We have talked about the invoice, we have talked about the debit notes and we have talked about the credit notes where we said it can be seen in two perspectives credit notes issued and credit notes that has been received and we have seen the tabular representation and the various source of documents to them thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel for other